Hello there folks, good Friday morning, uh, November 13, 2020, about 4.25 a.m. Just going to do a quick update on that earthquake that struck out there in Nevada a couple hours back. A 5.5 magnitude quake struck around the Mina, Nevada area. Specifically, directly, I should say, in this area where we've seen quite a bit of earthquake activity since early May of this year. Um, following that large 6.5 earthquake that struck out there back then. You can see the 5.5 right in the middle of that mix, right around that fault rupture out there. This is the area I took a took a ride out there to investigate. Uh, I didn't see any uh, surface feature, you know, fractures or whatnot while I was out there. A lot of uh, desert and mountain ranges out there. And also within this vicinity, I seen a, uh, well, I think it's right up around here is a major solar farm. Really large um complex out there of uh they, they say it's solar like a solar farm out there it's pretty neat it's got this big tower that sticks up out of the ground and uh it's weird it lights up and it goes up and down throughout the tower it's pretty crazy looking if you ever get a chance to go out there uh go check it out up here just northwest of tonopah but the earthquake activity uh this morning has definitely been ramping up 5.5 struck within this area and uh, we've seen the activity increase following that 5.5 and uh, this is no doubt an aftershock sequence of the previous larger earthquake back in may of uh well may 15th to be exact that's going to be this earthquake right here 6.5 near the monte uh, cristo i'm um, hopefully i pronounced that right uh, monte cristo range uh, in nevada that's 6.5 uh, has been a few months ago, right? But we've been seeing the activity continue for quite some time in this region. Just a large amount of aftershocks um, throughout uh, any given day. Over the past couple days, though, activity there has been pretty quiet. Also down here in the south has been quiet as well. As far as normal activity, but take a look down here. We got the swarm kicking up also in Southern California. Salton Sea region showing a large amount of earthquake activity right around that swarming area where we seen uh, a couple months ago uh, roughly about in that same area actually this is more north that larger swarm area was just to the northwest of brawley this one's a little bit a little step closer to the san andreas fault there roughly about uh, what are we looking at about nine miles or so maybe 10 miles from the tip of the southern part of san andreas fault this extension right here is a part of the plate boundary, the South, the uh, San Andreas Fault. That's the Barali Seismic Zone. So kind of monitoring this uh, major movement and activity in Southern Cal and Northern, uh, or Central Nevada, I should say. I don't know if they consider North, South, Central, whatever, but it's there Northwest of Tonopah. Um, and looking at the uh, the quakes there, we've definitely see a major ramp up since that 5.5 struck. So major movement, folks, along the north american continent out here along the southwest part of the uh of that area as i mentioned the swarm and the activity up here to the to the north of nevada plays a major part in plate tectonics so be on guard out there in southern cal uh, as we're looking at a major increase in pressure out there also we see an activity pick up in idaho um, following that 5.5 so tremendous movement going on out there definitely be on guard let's see how many earthquakes we've had since that 5.5 uh the largest looks like a 4.4 uh in that sequence of earthquakes there now once once again this is all aftershock activity following that 6.5 that struck may um uh where'd it go there we go may uh 15th of this year that earthquake was at 2.7 kilometers below surface. You can see how many folks felt it. It was felt over a wide area. There's a little bit of specific specific tectonic summary from the USGS. Uh, it occurred as a result of strike slip faulting in the shallow crest of the North American plate. Kind of like, you know, well, I mean, it's there are mountain ranges out there, right? There's obviously some, some uh, a lot of plate tectonics when it comes to building mountains and hills. Well, this is pretty much a surface quake uh let's see what else mostly uh tectonically the walker lane accommodates up to 25 percent of the north america pacific plate motion with the remainder mostly accommodated on the sandra's fault system so uh there's pretty good pretty good pressure built up there with the uh, plate tectonics there and roll 
Um, yeah, and then it goes on and talked about previous earthquakes. There's also a pretty cool um, site there from the uh, Nevada Geological Survey area. It shows you the fault rupture right around here. Or the general uh, general motion of the faults out here, I should say. That fault rupture was right in this area, this linear activity here. Kind of where you got uh, some motion here going uh, in this direction with that arrow. Also, it looks like some, some motion going in the opposite direction. So a lot of, uh, a lot of movement and uh, dynamics at play out there where this earthquake uh, struck there back in May. And no doubt we're seeing that we're seeing that uh, activity continue today, folks. I don't believe uh, you know this. This here is when you see swarms, when you see areas kick up, like we're seeing in Southern California right now, and the obvious increase in pressure out there in Nevada. It's a obvious sign that we got continued pressure here, specifically along this area of uh, the North American Plate here. Well, of course, it includes the Pacific part of the plate too. Uh, with the San Andreas Fault being that plate boundary. Uh, it's just good to be on guard, folks. Definitely looks like some major activity taking place out there. It's been relatively quiet. Look at the Pacific Ring of Fire out here. Very quiet, like I covered in the update video last night. Um, so the hot spot is the uh, United States of America. The uh, North American plate up here playing a uh, major part in earthquake activity today. So yeah, if you want to check out this specific uh, Monte Cristo, Crisco, Cristo range earthquake uh, back in May, they, they give you a pretty good, uh, see, I seen the patch. I went over that road there. I seen the patch that they did on that, uh, but that was the only surface damage that I could see. Uh, but then by the time I got to it, it was already patched over. Uh, but yeah, go check out that site. Uh, there's, there it is up here. It's the NBMG. Uh, well, I think if you just type into Google or Yahoo, whatever you use, uh, Nevada Geological Survey, it will pop up. A lot of history, a lot of uh, information out here when it comes to uh, you know resource as far as the earthquakes and, and mining and whatnot that takes place out there in Nevada. So go check it out. Uh, this activity, I tell you what, that 5.5 definitely showed up on Yellowstone National Park. Check out, uh, check that out. All throughout the park here this gives you a pretty good measurement of uh, how powerful the earthquake is and also how sensitive these equipment uh, this equipment these seismograph stations are that they use um, up there in Yellowstone National Park of course that one the ones that barely pick it up like Mirror Lake Plateau up here this here is specifically the earthquake that 5.5 you can see that one right there the 4.4 is going to be the smaller there uh, but also it showed up pretty uh, significant as well but the station like over here in Mirror Lake, uh, they got that data squashed pretty good. East entrance squashed when it comes to picking up data. I'm not for sure what why that is. Also Mount Sheridan down here. Just the sensitivity is so squashed to where uh, you would have to have something significant for it to even show up on these stations here. But uh, all these other ones are pretty well adjusted as they should be to pick up microquakes and uh, relevant activity there at Yellowstone National Park. All right, folks, um, be on guard. Be safe out there today. It's looking pretty active, especially with the swarming. I mean, this is not just coincidental here. This all takes place when we see swarming down here to the south and increase in larger pressure up here to the north in Nevada. Um, the only thing we haven't really seen is this area here along the Ridgecrest region. Um, yes, it does have some earthquakes, some micro-earthquakes there, but we haven't seen them really large ramp up i expect that to change uh, especially with that being right in between there of uh, these two uh these two obvious signs of pressure out there along the north american plate Let's zoom in here towards the salted sea area a little bit and get a overview of how many quakes have struck here uh, just within the last oh man since i did the update here last night about eight o'clock or so 19 earthquakes that's obvious sign of a swarm i did mention that on my update, uh, there was some activity showing up on one of my seismograph stations there in uh, Barrett, California, that sits down here to the southwest. I mentioned that I was seeing some activity there. Uh, USGS was not reporting it. I think they maybe reported like one quake over here, but uh, I think that's what we're uh, witnessing is a swarm of activity there showing up on the seismograph station. 
Also, uh, you can see that. I'm trying to see it, see here. Yeah, this activity here, Mammoth Lakes, that kind of looks like a uh, not too much of a localized earthquake. It's, yes, it is spiky, but it's also drawn out a little bit, uh, telling me that this activity sh could be, uh, pick, be be the activity there in Nevada, but this Mammoth Lake station that sits to the west is picking it up. So I'm going to have to find a uh, Nevada station and uh, key that up there just because of the increase in activity. All right, folks, um, I'm going to jump off here. I'll be monitoring the activity throughout the day and do any relevant updates as they become warranted. Have a good Friday the 13th, right? Peace out.